good afternoon dear students now we will continue with the production of vitamin b12 okay in the last video we studied about the flow chart of vitamin b12 production where all the ingredients required for the production medium are mixed in a mixing tank sterilized and then put into the main fermentation vessel where the temperature is maintained in the range of 80 degree fahrenheit uh, the inoculum and antifoam agents are required and then once the fermentation is over the whole fermented beer is subjected to evaporation okay syrup tank and then drum dried and then vitamin b12 is ready okay but the extraction and recovery process once the fermentation is over the extraction and recovery process varies with the type of b12 we want to produce the form in which we want b12 okay so let us study that now the yield of cobalamin is usually in the range of 1 to 2 mg per liter in the fermented broth recovery now most of the cobalamin produced is associated with the mycelium during the first 60 hours of fermentation but a considerable portion is in the solution at the end of fermentation period now heating the mixture to boiling at ph 5 or below liberates the cobalamin quantitatively from the mycelium okay so the broth containing cobalamin is heated to boiling at ph uh, 5 or below so that the cobalamin is liberated now the broth containing the cobalamin is further treated depending upon the type of product desire desirable okay the type of product which we want to want that will decide the further recovery process so the first thing is we have to extract out the cobalamin that is present in mycelium for that purpose it is heated to boiling at ph 5 or below so that most of the cobalamin comes into the fermented broth okay now for obtaining crystalline vitamin b12 the first step is filtration to remove the mycelium so the whole broth is subjected to filtration so that mycelium is separated out the whole filtered broth containing cobalamin is now treated with cyanide to bring about the conversion of cobalamin into cyanocobalamin okay so filtered broth is treated with cyanide so that now we get cyanocobalamin okay this treated broth containing cyanocobalamin is now passed through a column containing adsorbing agents like activated charcoal bentonite fuller's earth or ion exchange resins okay so the treated broth containing cyanocobalamin is passed through columns containing adsorbing agent where cyanocobalamin is adsorbed now the adsorbed cyanocobalamin is eluted out from the adsorbent by using aqueous solution of organic bases or even HCl or water or water acetone solution right. So the adsorbed cyanocobalamin is now eluted out from the adsorbent by using aqueous solution of organic bases or acid water uh, okay hydroalcohols like that okay. Now, the so, so, cyanocobalamin is now extracted from the alcoholic or acidic solution by using phenol or chrysol alone. Okay. So, in the last step what we said, studied that cyanocobalamin is extracted out from the adsorbing agent. It is eluted out from the adsorbing agent. Okay. Now, the cyanocobalamin may be associated with um, hydroalcohols. Okay. So, it is extracted out from alcoholic solution by using phenol or chrysol alone or in a mixture with benzene, butanol, carbon tetrachloride or chloroform. So now you extract out the cyanocobalamin. This extracted cyanocobalamin is then precipitated and crystallized from various solutions by evaporation, dilution with appropriate solvents, addition of reagents like paracrysol. Okay. Again it is precipitated and crystallized out. Some impurities are still present. So, these impurities are removed by precipitation by calcium and zinc hydroxide. Right? So, once the all impurities are removed, we get pure vitamin B12. Okay? Now, this pure vitamin B12 is again obtained by performing chromatography on activated alumina and elution with acetic acid methanol mixture 
or precipitation with ether or we can say even uh, ether acetone mixture, ethanol acetone mixture and all. So pure vitamin B12 is obtained finally by using chromatography or by performing chromatography on activated alumina and subsequent elution with acetic acid methanol or ethanol acetone mixture and all. And finally it is precipitated out by using ether. So this pure vitamin B12 can now be used for therapeutic purposes. See, if we want to produce, however, if we want to produce vitamin B12 for as animal feed, then the process is a slight different. The extraction process is slightly different. So, if vitamin B12 is desired for animal feed, the whole fermented broth, you can say the filtered fermented broth is subjected to evaporation. Okay, so that we get a concentrated form. The 3% solids are obtained. It is further evaporated and concentrated to get higher percentage of solids and then it is directly, the thick syrup is directly subjected to drum drying. After drum drying, the dried powder can be used as a feed supplement or as a source of vitamin B12 mixed with the animal feed for poultry or for milching animals or even for squines, right? So that is all about vitamin B12 production.